Previously on how to make a portfolio WordPress website with Neuron themes, we served an in-depth tutorial on how to create a fully functional portfolio homepage website, edit our header, services, clients, the portfolio items, and the footer to top it all off. We shared a comprehensive guide to Neuron's finest tips and supreme design styles. For this episode, we shall reveal all the best insights and tutorial skills to walk you through how to create a single portfolio page to display your singular projects. We will start this video right from the WordPress dashboard. Go to Templates, Theme Builder. Let's take a moment to comprehend the power behind this feature. Here will be stored all the templates you create, each being divided into the respective categories for easy navigation. You have immediate access to edit, delete, view, or export the templates you've created for the ultimate flexibility when working with templates. To create a new template, first, choose the type of template you wish to build. For this video, we will need to go to the Singles tab and click on Add New. You will be prompted to select the post type you are aiming to create, which will be Portfolio Item. And then, you will need to name your template. It's better to name your templates properly for better organization and easy access. Click on Create Template and this will take you to the Neuron Library first. From where, you can choose stunningly designed templates that can be inserted with just a click and are fully customizable down to every detail. For the sake of this video, we will skip this step and create our portfolio single from scratch using our bare hands and the advanced elements available at our fingertips. As you can see, the header we created was assigned to single pages as well, since we set its conditions to be displayed on the entire site. Of course, you can make changes to it and assign it to be shown only on portfolio items pages, which we will do later on this video. From the left panel, you can see all the single page elements being prioritized at the top. All of the elements are dynamic. This means they extract content from the database and display them onto the page. You have the post title, post excerpt, post content, featured image, author box and more. Let's start with the first section and add one to our design. Choose a section with two columns. From the options panel, Go to the Advanced tab and add some padding values of 80 pixels at the top and 100 pixels at the bottom of the section. I know it seems a little bit confusing to jump from the Advanced tab to the Layout tab, which was on display by default, but hey, I don't make the rules here. You'll have to ask our designers. Now, from the Layout tab, set the vertical align to middle, and now it's time to introduce the first element onto the page. Let's drag the post info and delete some of the content as we are only going to need the comments and adjust it from here. Under the type option, choose term and under taxonomy, choose portfolio categories. Let's add an icon from the library as this isn't doing us much favor. Search for the circle icon and pick this one. Now, let's head over to the styles tab. We will need to change the color of the icon and have our distinct blue color follow us along on this video as well. Set the size of the icon to the value of 10. Let's customize the text while we're at it. Set the spacing or indent as the option is named to the value of 10. Pick a color from our global colors list and set it to primary. Set the typography option and let's use the style of the tagline for this one. Go to the advanced tab and add some padding values of 8 pixels at the bottom. This looks neat. Now it's time to add the title onto the page. Select the element and drag it on the working screen. And that's it. Let's add the excerpt right under the post title. We will need to give it some styling improvements. Let's change the text color and set it to primary. Tweak the typography option. Once again, choose our global styles. Now, some of our basic elements behold dynamic capabilities as well, with which you will be able to extract content from the database. One of such elements is the heading element. 
let's drag it onto the page under our excerpt. Click on this database barrel icon to make the text dynamic and choose the post date. Now, set the HTML tag to paragraph and that should be it. Let's make some slight adjustments to the columns as well. Click on its handle to open the options panel and set the widget space to the value of 16. Go to the advanced tab and this time we will add some margin values of 80 pixels to the right side of the column. What's a portfolio item without a featured image? Drag the element onto the page and it will generate our featured image that we once assigned. It seems like our featured image doesn't need much improvements. Let's go ahead and add our content. Drag the post content element onto the page and this too will display dynamic content that we choose to assign. All there is left to do is edit and stylize its main configurations. We can assign the width of the section to be of 1300 values and then add some padding values of 100 to the bottom of the section. We will leave this element as it is for now and we will continue to add and edit other dynamic content onto our design as all of this will be inherited to other single portfolio pages as well. Let's add a dash of composure and design a beautiful divider between the sections. Go to the Style step and set the color of the divider to this light gray shade. Leave the weight as it is and set the gap to zero. Click on the section's handle and assign the content width to be a value of 1300. This has become pretty usual, but add some padding values of 90 pixels at the bottom to give our divider some room to breathe. And this looks good. Now it's time we add another section. Once again, the structure will be of two columns. From the Layout tab, set the vertical align to bottom. And guess what? Some more padding values. at 60 pixels at the bottom. Here, we will add a heading element first that will describe our section. Let's name it something like Next Projects. Now, let's copy and paste the element onto the other column. This has become a familiar feature to you from our previous video. And let's change the text using the inline editing. If you wish to link the text to the projects page, and under Link, you can type in the URL for the page, or simply write Home and it will link the text to your homepage or any other page you wish. Set the HTML tag of the heading to Paragraph and align it to the right. Go to the Styles tab and change the text color to Primary. Choose the Typography style from Globals and let's sprinkle some decoration for our text. From here, add an underline. And we're done with the introduction of this section. This is optional, but using the Post element, you can add related portfolio items onto the page. Drag in the element and we'll leave the content as it is for now. Let's go ahead and configure the layout settings. Set the columns per row to the value of 2 and set the post per page again to the value of 2. You can choose to display as many items you wish, but in our design, number 2 looks decent. Set the image ratio to be 0 0.99 and let's hide the excerpt while we're at it. From the metadata, let's delete the date and the comments and instead, we'll choose to show terms and select the portfolio category taxonomy. We will hide the Read More button as well. Now, to change the content of the post element, we can do that from the Queries tab. Choose the source of the element to be related, include by term, and select Portfolio Categories as your source. You can see here you have a fallback option to display if no relevant results are found. It's time for some fun. Go to the Styles tab and set the column gap to 70 pixels and the row gap to be the value of 0. Go to the Image section and set the spacing between the image and the title to 24. From the Content section, set the spacing of the title to the value of 14 pixels. Choose the color for the meta text from our global selection. Set the typography style to text. As the last configuration, let's edit the section. Go to the Advanced tab and add some bottom paddings of 80 pixels. We will use one of our tricks. Let's copy the divider we created earlier and paste it under our related item section. Since we copied the element, we will need to configure the section 
and add the same value of 1300 for the content width. Let's preview this for a bit. I like how it turned out. Now, pay close attention to this part. We are going to witness how our portfolio items will build the same design itself. Watch this. See the little eye icon next to the update button? It can be used to preview the live page. But if you click on settings, you can see that under the preview dynamic content as, we have selected portfolio items. Now all we need to do is type in the name of any other portfolio single, select it, and click on apply and preview. This will have our design be inherited from the single portfolio template that we built a few minutes earlier. This feature will help you see how your design will pair with all your portfolio items before you decide that this is the final design you want to go with. Let's hit update to have our design go live. But first, we need to set the conditions for the template. You can have your template be assigned across all pages or choose a more specific condition. You can exclude a particular design from certain pages, from the drop-down menu, under Portfolio Item, choose Portfolio. Here as well, you can narrow down your taxonomy. Simply type in the name of a single item and the design will be inherited only for that particular page, but we will assign it on all single portfolio items. Let's click on Save and Close and you're done. Now from here, we'll navigate and transport ourselves onto the WordPress dashboard. Go to Portfolio, All Portfolio Items, which contains all the items that you've added, hence the naming. Let's go ahead and edit one of our items. You can see here all the components, like the title, category, featured image, excerpt. All there is missing are the images for our portfolio items, like the one we saw in the preview. Let's get down to building. Search for the neuron gallery element and drag it onto the page. Let's select our images. Let's choose this one and this one and all that you need. Click on create a new gallery. Now from this screen, because we will turn this into a metro layout, a quick clarification is needed. The metro style uses a series of containers, rows and columns to lay out and align content. What we need to do is click on the image to open its settings and under the metro column, the default value will be 3. You can assign a value from 1 to 12. And since we want the first image to fill the entire section of the gallery, we will assign it to the value of 12, the largest value. In the second image, we'll assign it to have a value of 6 and this means it will only take up half the space of the section. We will do the same with the other three images and they will line up in two columns. Let's arrange the images, of course, all in a drag and drop interface. Let's fix the layout and choose the metro style. Now you should see the changes. Set the image size to full. Go to the Styles tab and set the column gap to the value of 80 pixels. And the row gap will take the same value as well. Click on the section's handle and set the content width to full width. Let's preview our metro style. Exceptional. See our content? That needs some adjustments too. First, click on the section's handle and set the content width to be the value of 1000. And from the advanced tab, add some bottom padding to the value of 80 pixels. Done with the section, click on the column's handle and add a new column. Arrange the column. Place it to the left and drag it until you have the width of 30% for the first column, leaving the second column with a width of 70%. This is fun actually, here you can test those meticulous reflexes of yours. Drag in a heading, type in the definition for the section. You need to set its HTML tag to paragraph. Go to the Styles tab, choose a text color, select a typography style for the heading, and let's tweak the text weight a bit. We will make it 600. Next will be grab the icon list element and drag it onto the page. Let's delete some list items and start naming the works we did. 
Delete the icon as it will not be needed for this design. Let's duplicate the items three times and replace each item with its respective content. This allowed us to inherit the style from the first item to the other three. Go to the Styles tab as we have some configurations to make. Start from the text color as well as the typography style which will need to be set to the style of small text. One step we missed was to set the space between the list items which will need to be set to the value of 6. Go ahead and drag in another heading element. Type in the heading text, set the HTML tag to paragraph. Style the heading by changing its color and assign it another typography style from the global style list. Go to the advanced tab and add some bottom padding of the value of 12. Duplicate the first heading and move it at the bottom of the column. Simply change the element's content to the name of your site and you can place the URL in the link field here. Go to the Styles tab and add an underline for the text to make it stand out more. This will be the last part of our design. Search for the slides element and place it onto the page. Configure the sections options first, have the content width be set to full width, click on the elements handle to open its options panel, delete the other items and configure the first one. From the content tab, delete the title, description, as well as the buttons text as they won't be needed in our design. Go to the background tab and click on the image to upload one from your library. Click on insert media. Now what you should do is duplicate the first item and start changing the content for each item. Click on the second item to change the image and the process shall be repeated for the other two items. But we will speed the video a bit. Next on, you will need to change the height of your slides. That should be set to the value of 700 and the same value will be inherited to the other items as well. Open the slider settings and remove the navigation by choosing the non option. Switch the handle on for autoplay and update it. This is our final design. I know we've come a long way to achieve this style, but I believe it was all worth it since we have tried to put all the tips and knowledge there is to make it easier for you to work with our themes and achieve the remarkable results such as this one. As a final act of customization, we will have our header be sticky and follow the users while they scroll down the page. This is yet another breakthrough feature that empowers the powerful duo of Neuron Themes and Elementor. You can customize all parts on your site, no limitations. And now you can have them configured from the same screen. See the black border around our header? Click on the Edit Header handle and you will gain automated access to change, customize and design your header and have it match your style. Let's get down to business. Click on the sections handle from the styles tab, choose the background type classic and select a color. As our current header is transparent, let's choose white so it blends with the rest of the design. Next, go to the advanced tab and click on motion effect and from the sticky option, choose top. You can assign different devices you wish your sticky header to appear. We will remove the mobile option as it will only cramp our design. And that's all it. Click on update and see our sticky header. We are done for this video. Make sure to check our next tutorial on mobile responsiveness.